Now, here we have a carbon that is, uh, here we have hydrogens on a carbon that's got an oxygen attached. Now, this range shouldn't surprise us because here we have hydrogens on a carbon with an electronegative atom. Mm -hmm. Well, we said that that was generally between 2.5 and 3.75. Mm -hmm. well, that's pretty much where that is, right here. Actually, I think yesterday I said that if you're on a electronegative atom, if you're on a carbon with an electronegative atom, you'd be between 2.5 and 3.75. But maybe that was a little bit too narrow. Maybe I should have just said. I think yesterday maybe I should just have said that if you're on a carbon with an electronegative atom, you'll be between 2.5 and 5, generally speaking. Maybe it was, I was being too restricted to say it was just between 2.5 or 3, and 3.75 or whatever I said. It's, it's going to be around this region. More than 2.5, but if there's only one electronegative atom, it's still less than 5. Okay. Well, that fits what we see here. Here we have a carbon that uh, it, the hydrogens are on the carbon with an electronegative atom, and here they are between 3.4 and 4. And we know these hydrogens and this hydrogen won't be splitting each other, because we just saw how hydroxyhydrogens don't do splitting. Here, again, we have a similar uh, idea. Now, what type of functional group is this? Um, this is a, 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 an ester. This would be an ether. ether, excuse me. ether. We haven't really worked much with esters. This would be an ether. I think we did um, a whole session on ethers one or two sessions ago, because here we have an oxygen attached to two carbon chains. What they should be doing is just getting a piece of paper and writing all the functional groups that you've learned about so far. Just keep going over that over and over, because it's important to know the names of the functional groups that you've studied so far. Well, we would again expect these hydrogens to be in the 2.5 to 5 region, because they're on a carbon that's attached to an electronegative element. And here we are, 3.3 to 4. Here we have a hydrogen on a nitrogen. This turns out to be pretty similar to alcohol hydrogens. OH and NH turn out to be pretty similar in the sense that, again, there's a pretty broad region from 0.5 to 5. And again, we wouldn't get splitting here. This hydrogen won't do splitting. And again, that's a consequence of hydrogen bonding. Okay. Now, how about uh, this hydrogen over here? Well, this hydrogen, its carbon doesn't have an electronegative element. But it's adjacent to a carbon with an electronegative element. So we would have predicted that would be between one and a quarter and two and a half. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where we are here, between one and a quarter and two and a half, to be more precise, 2.1 to 2.3. Mm -hmm. So that fits in with what we've seen before. And here we have a similar situation, except now this carbon is more substituted. It has another carbon chain on its right. So that pulls it a little bit further to the left, 2.2 to 2.6. These hydrogens are on a carbon that is bonded to an electronegative element up here at the top of the right-hand column. So now we'd expect this to be between 2.5 and 5. And that's what we got, 3.7 to 9. And now this is the same situation, but more substituted. So it would be between 4.1 and 4.7. Here again, we have a bunch of hydrogens on a carbon with an electronegative element, all these different halogens. So we'd expect that to be between 2.5 and 5. And that's what we get for all of these. But notice. Why are these further to the left? Why are the fluorines further to the left than the chlorines? Because it's more electronegative. Because fluorine is more electronegative. Notice how that as we go from iodine to, fluor to bromine to chlorine to fluorine, we keep getting pulled to the left. Now, what does this stand for here? Do you remember what does the AR stand for? An aromatic. Right, which we generally probably means benzene. benzene. Mm -hmm. So this means a benzene ring with an OH attached. Mm -hmm. Benzene with an OH attached. And here it turns out to be where the, the region of absorption there is 4.5 to 4.7. Now we have alkene hydrogens. Well, we were already saying that alkene hydrogens start at the four, around the 4.5 region. So here we are above the 4.6 to 5. Here we have an alkene hydrogen that's more substituted. So we expect it to get pulled further to the left. We saw that when you're more substituted with alkyl groups, you get pulled, pulled further to the left. Here's an important absorption. Well, what does this ARH stand for? What is the, a, what is the H connected to? Right. Remember, the best way for us to write benzene rings for spectroscopy is like this. Although, actually, 
Let's step back for a second. Here's another way to write benzene. Well, you can see that each of these carbons is bonded, is showing three bonds to carbons. Each of these carbons in the ring is showing three bonds to other carbons, which means there's room for one hidden hydrogen. So each of these carbons here would have one hidden hydrogen, unless it's bonded to something else. So even though we don't usually draw the hydrogens here, they each have one hidden hydrogen. And what's the region that each of these hydrogens would generally absorb in, according to the table that we were just looking at? 6.5 to 8.5. Right. We should not treat this like a normal alkene. Even though this looks like an alkene, this is a special case. So we should not treat this like normal alkenes. We know that normal alkenes start around the 4.5 to 5 area. Mm -hmm. And this is much further to the left, isn't it? What did they say? 6.5 to 8. eight. eight. OK. So this is a good indication for when we have a benzene ring. Okay. Now, here we have a hydrogen connected to a carbon-oxygen double bond. This is just a special case, which is very far to the left. And here we have a hydrogen on an oxygen connected to a carbon with a double bond. By the way, this is an aldehyde. I guess we've already learned about aldehydes. Uh, or, or actually, no. Uh, you and I haven't talked about aldehydes, I don't think. But the aldehyde is from 9.5 to 10.1. And then finally, here we have a carboxylic acid. And this is in the 10 to 13 region. Okay. So you're not going to have to memorize all these, I don't think. You'll be given the table, but you need to be able to interpret the table. Now, we know a lot of this is what we would have predicted just from our general rules of thumb yesterday. But this can also let us be more precise.